Hello, and welcome back to learning objective number three of chapter 11, analyzing and recording uh, shareholders' equity transactions. In this learning objective, we will be looking at preparing entries for different types of dividends, whether they're cash or stock, and understand stock splits and their financial impact. So first, dividends. Dividends mean an equal distribution of a portion of the corporation's retained earnings to its shareholders. And I mean equal distribution for the share class. So if there is a dividend declared to share class A, that means everybody in share class A would get what was declared for them. There might be 100 or 200 or two different types of share classes, as few as one. And whatever the dividends are, they need to specify which share class. So it's possible to declare a dividend to share class A and not declare a dividend to share class B. It's all a part of that strategy thing. One of the reasons why it is awesome, can be awesome to incorporate. Most typically when people um, say dividends, they are referring to cash dividends. They are the most common. However, you can dividend out on other things too. You might dividend out other stocks, shares. Uh, you might dividend out property, and you might dividend out, um, oh, I forget what they are called, it's on the tip of my tongue, um, but it's essentially uh, the dividends that um, redistribute the company at the end um, upon dissolution. Okay, so let's take a look at cash dividend. For a cash dividend to occur, the corporation must meet a two-part solvency test. And uh, that is from our Canadian uh, Business Corporation Act. And effectively, this means that you need to show that you're dividending out excess profits in cash. So it's literally illegal to dividend out when you don't have enough, you can't dividend out money and then default on your creditors because then effectively you would be stealing from your debtors to give to your shareholders. That is not allowed. Uh, another requirement is that a dividend must have an, a formal declaration by the board of directors. So in a sense, um, the share owners that elect the board, the dividend has to be declared by the board. So effectively, the shareholders are determining by way of the board, by way of their proxy, these dividends to be declared. Now, there are three important dates in connection with dividends. One is the declaration date. So that's the one that we just talked about, the formal declaration of the board, uh, dividends by the board of directors. Then we have the record date. So who owns the shares on the date of record? Then we have the payment date. Let's look at each one of these and any journal entries associated with each one of them. Note. There's no journal entry for the record date, but there are journal entries for declaration and payment date. The first one, the declaration date is the date that the board of directors formally authorizes the cash dividend. This commits the corporation to a binding legal obligation. Obligation. For example, um, say the board of directors declares on December 1st, a 50 cent per share cash dividend on 100,000 common shares. And right here, it doesn't seem like there's multiple classes of shares. So it's to all the common shares um, of which there are 100,000 outstanding. Therefore, the amount that the accounting team must record is 100,000 shares times 50 cents equals $50,000. And so they would debit dividends declared and credit dividends payable. This dividends declared is either going to go into our retained earnings, um, just kind of hanging out there as a contra account, um, or sometimes um, instead of doing a debit into dividends declared, it might be a, de a debit directly to retained earnings because you're literally taking those retained earnings and then distributing them to your shareholders. So again, accounting likes to do a couple different things uh, or the same thing a couple different ways. This dividends declared could also be retained earnings. Note 
On the declaration date, this is when this liability, this dividend becomes payable because you have a past transaction, pardon me, you have a past event. The form, uh, board of directors made the formal authorization that represents a present obligation that the company can't get out of. It's been declared that will result in a future outflow of economic resources, in this instance, cash. So this is now a liability, and that is why dividends payable gets set up as a liability to distribute these dividends at a later date. However, because it's at a later date, this doesn't impact our cash yet. All right, the next date is our date of record. And this is who owns the shares at, at what time. So the date of record is specified in the in the uh, declaration uh, date by uh, the board of directors. And if the company doesn't have the share registry, the list of people who own the shares, then you go to your third party, the share registry company, and um, they would be responsible for, uh, for either taking the dividends and distributing them out or giving the date of record to the company to do directly. This record date does not have a journal entry. Nothing happens here as far as a financial transaction, therefore no journal entry. However, this is the date that determines who owns the shares uh, and who gets the dividends. All right, date number three, the payment date, when the money is actually paid to the shareholders. Awesome, so we are going to reverse out, we are going to debit our dividends payable, and the company, if it's a cash dividend, is going to credit cash for that amount. All right, so let's look at an example. Give this screen a read, pause the video, and then I want you to prepare the entries, uh, if applicable, on the appropriate dates to record this cash dividend. Talk soon. All right, CB Corporation has $110,000.50 non-cumulative preferred shares that have been issued. All right, again, you don't have to worry too, too, too much, um, but just know that in intermediate financial accounting, you will understand what non-cumulative, cumulative, cumulative um, convertible, yada, yada, preferred shares, they're all the versions of saute um, that are thrown on top of the regular uh, common shares, the regular fa. All right. Uh, so CB Corporation has 110,000 shares outstanding, uh, probably issued uh, at $1.50, declares an annual cash dividend, and they are wanting to, it's an annual cash dividend, uh, and these preferred shares are typically paid four times a year, although I would like for it to be specified here, it isn't, um, but again, preferred shares, they are the ones that get paid according to their contract. So with this, we will assume that um, because it is partway through the year, that they are gonna get a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, a fourth. So when we have our May 15th declaration date, that is when they are going to um, dividends, debit our dividends, our dividends declared, declared, our retained earnings directly, and this is for $110,000. Times by 1.5 divided by 4 to reflect the fact that it is paid quarterly. So they're annual cash dividends, but they are paid quarterly. All right, so then we need to set up our preferred, can we preferred shares or dividends payable? So you preferred shares dash dividends payable, but dividends payable works. And this is to record the uh, declaration of quarterly pref uh, dividends. 
All right, sorry, 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 boom, boom. And I'll just get some. All right, then we have June 10th that rolls around and there is no journal entry because this is not a financial transaction. This is literally who owns what on this date because we have to prepare um, to pay what was declared to the humans that own them as at June, June 10th. And then on June 30th, it rolls around uh, that their quarterly portion of their annual uh, dividends are gonna be paid and we will reverse out debit. We will reverse out our dividends payable. Mm, we can't spell dividends payable. And we would credit our cash, and this is for the quarterly amount of our annual dollar fifty. Again, I would have loved if it really specified. However, uh, it is an annual cash dividend that is going to be remitted. I mean, not remitted, um, paid quarterly. All right, and so this is to reflect to record the payment. All right, so let's stop this example and go look at different types of dividends. So while a cash dividend is paid in cash, stock dividends can be distributed or paid in shares. The fair value on the date of declaration is assigned to that stock or share dividend. Stock is more of a US term, share is more of a Canadian term. However, we tend to use these interchangeably. So for example, if um, you have 0.1 share, if you were declared 0.1 share for every one share that you own on the date of declaration, and a share is worth $30 per share, you have 10,000 shares, then you would take 0.1 times 30 times 10,000 is equal to 3,000. Then you would replace um, where we had declared a dividend with cash with common shares. So instead of it being, um, oh, sorry, instead of it being a uh, dividend declared of um, 3,000 in your head, you're thinking cash, it's still dividends declared, 3,000. Instead of uh, stock dividend payable and in your head you're thinking cash, it's still uh, dividend payable, but now we're just specifying a stock dividend payable. And so we still have those three dates, date of declaration, date of record, and date of payment. However, the only thing that changes is the stock dividend. All right, so note, it doesn't matter what you paid for the shares way back when, it just matters what is the fair value of the shares on the date of declaration. The questions might give you multiple amounts at multiple dates, and it's up to you to see fair value. And if you think about you know, what we're trying to do with accounting, and that's reflect the economic reality, well, the economic reality is on the date of declaration, this shareholder just got effectively 10% more of whatever the company is worth on that date of declaration. Therefore, we need to use that fair value on the date of declaration. All right, so then same thing, no journal entry for the date of record. And then when the stock dividend is paid, we reverse out, so debit stock dividend payable for 3,000, and then we credit or issue the common shares. So where this would have said cash of 3,000 with a cash dividend, we are merely issuing more common shares through uh, when we have a stock dividend. All right, so some of you might be asking, why the heck would, what's the benefit of a stock dividend if you're effectively giving somebody who had, say, 100 shares in your company, now 10 more, or 110? Well, again, it comes back to that big picture, you know, strategy. And so um, perhaps it is to keep your shareholders' dividend expectations um, without spending cash. Maybe you don't have cash, so you're like, hey, listen, we'll give you more, um, more uh, shares in this company 
it might be especially worth more if you have different classes to share. So you're giving one ownership group um, perhaps um, more shares and then um, at a later date, um, this could influence different types of transactions that come, uh, just again, depending on the strategy. Uh, this could increase the marketability of the shares. However, perhaps not super intuitive. Um, by doing this, you're effectively issuing more shares and that would decrease the market price of the shares, but then maybe it makes it more accessible to more people and um, you know on the share exchange and then they end up buying more and that could actually help boost your overall um, value of your company. Um, it could help uh, reinvest and restrict a portion of the shareholders' equity. Um, and so interesting. Uh, so there could be kind of, uh, hey, you now um, are per bought, bought more in. It restricts the availability of retained earnings uh, to be distributed in cash later. Uh, again, comes down to strategy. Now let's take a look at what the effect of stock dividends are. So on the left-hand side, that this is before the stock dividend, and on the right-hand side, this is what happens after. So you're effectively taking money from retained earnings, so stuff that um, was generated in the company, and you're changing it into uh, money that was um, sourced from outside of the company, right? So normally common shares would be from outside investors, whereas retained earnings is your surplus of income over expenses. So by issuing a stock dividend, you're effectively kind of transitioning that in uh, to saying, hey, thank you, current shareholders. You now have more of this company. And again, because share share common shareholders, <coughs> excuse me, um, are the ones that are effectively electing the board and declaring the dividends, um, either directly or indirectly. Uh, you would think they were either on quote board with this, they're okay with this, or if they're not, then um, there might be kind of a power play uh, involved. But the board never wants to make shareholders angry because effectively they are um, they are elected by the shareholders. However, you know, shareholders, maybe a few, maybe many, uh, there could be some interesting events there. Let's just put that there. However, so do you want to mention that they went from before the stock dividend having 50,000 uh, shares issued and to now have 55,000. But total shareholders' equity remains the same. Uh, whereas if this was a cash dividend, it would, the shares would stay the same and retained earnings would go down by 75,000, right? So shareholders' equity would also go down by 75,000 if this was a share dividend. All right, so last thing to discuss here is a stock split. And so a stock split involves the issuance of additional shares to shareholders according to their percentage ownership. This is like a stock dividend, but much larger. A uh, stock split has no effect on the total share capital, retained earnings, or total shareholders' equity. In fact, it's not even a journal entry. So this would be what's referred to as a memo entry, where it is noted on the financial statements, but not in the finance, not not journalized as a financial transaction. So a stock split would be uh, if you had one share and then the company did a stock split, uh, two to one stock split, you would now have two shares for every one share that you previously had. It could be two to one, it could be three to one, it could be 2.5 to one, it could be whatever ratio. And so market value of the shares would decrease roughly proportionate to the split. However, similar to the uh, stock dividend, because there's now more available and each share is effectively worth half as much, it could be make it more accessible to different uh, shareholders. And therefore that might end up increasing the demand and like uh, making the stock price go up. So kind of interesting, it might be part of a strategy to do a stock split um, rather than having 
say a million shares uh, issued in outstanding that are worth $500 each, having 2 million shares that are each outstanding at $250, and then maybe that makes it a little bit more attractive for the average investor. Okay, so let's take another look at the effect of these stock splits. So again, there's no journal entry, so there's no change here. No change, no change to common shares, retained earnings, shareholders' equity. However, what there is a sh uh, change to is a memo entry to the number of shares. We went from, t uh, we did a two to one stock split. So we went from having 50,000 before to having 100,000 after, which was uh, a difference of 50,000 shares. But again, because it's a stock split, there wasn't a journal entry, therefore common shares, retained earnings, and shareholders' equity remains the same. So my question for you is, if you were an individual uh, that owned common shares, would you prefer to have a cash dividend, a stock dividend, or a stock split, all else being equal? If you said cash, uh, you and I agree, all things being equal, meaning we do not know what the strategic objectives are of this corporation or of ourselves if we are major shareholders. Uh, but when in doubt, get the cash. Heck, if you want, you can always buy the stocks yourself. But cash is is king and it can definitely uh, you know help you find your next investment that you would like to invest in. All right, people, uh, one friendly reminder, we are looking forward uh, to, and I mean looking ahead to our final exam. Friendly reminder, your calculator, this is a lovely calculator. It is non-programmable. It is um, very clearly non-programmable. So please take your few dollars and go to the bookstore if you haven't already and make sure you get yourself a non-programmable calculator. It doesn't have to be this one. It can be any non-programmable. If, uh, if your calculator costs more than $100, it is probably programmable. If your calculator um, has a memory, if you can write smiley faces and write notes in it and store it, if it makes a graph on it, that is programmable. You cannot have it. But any other calculator and you can have it. When in doubt, uh, post to our discussion boards and uh, myself or one of our marketing team will be happy to answer you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, it is great to have you back and let us you know, finish this semester strong. This is one of the three final weeks and I look forward to seeing you on the discussion boards, uh, engaging with you, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.